evening everyone uh, first of all i would like to thank the khaki team particularly mr farooq disha ayer umrigar sharmigar sridhar nayar and akshi for giving me an opportunity to talk on agenda because since is lockdown i was very desperately wanted to go there several times because that is one of uh, 50% of my phd dissertation is on agenda and what uh, he said uh, uh, farooq said just now that my association with professor spink whatever i could understand from him and my father suresh was on that the side for the past 30 years and today's presentation i dedicate to professor spink whom we call him as uncle walter so let me begin but before so i once again thank the khaki team So to begin with, direct you have to spare, uh, bear with me for ten minutes more because I'm trying to bring out agenda in a very short time because in one's lifetime to understand agenda is very difficult. But to be directly jumping on agenda, I've just kept my watch in front of me to see the timing. It should not exceed more than one and uh, one hour and ten minutes, as Farooq sir suggested me. So before starting on agenda, let me tell you for those who don't know. that how this rocket architecture began in india so its origin was there in on a small scale in northeast india during the mauryan time that is during 250 bc so ashoka and his grandson dasharatha they were responsible in making seven rocket caves they are excavations they are not construction one should understand that these are the excavations we cut the, around the rock in the barabar hills and the nagarjuna hills very close to gaya so that is bihar northeastern india which was the homeland of the mauryas therefore which began a new development and these rocket caves were not for the buddhist monks but it was meant for the ajivikas who were followers of jainism so initially what you see here is the facade that is the entrance you should look carefully this is the first facade in india you can say the first facade in india and inside what you see is the hut like appearance because they were not prop, they were never uh, stone cutters they had no experience so this was excavated in a granite this is the facade of lomas rishi the front portion we call it is a facade just look carefully at the facade and we can trace the development right from barabar hills to elora caves until 8th century 7th century we can see the development how this rocket architecture goes it was it was natural for the architect to duplicate the conventional structural models even after they had found a new and totally new medium because it was mauryan king he said he wanted some permanent material which will last for thousands of years so giving up wooden palaces and all that he started making these caves and this you, you saw you know the ashokan pillars as well the monolithic pillars therefore it began a new development following the conventional wooden brick structures were given up Though we should understand now, this is just a very brief introduction which I would like to give you all. Though this architecture is Orient was in northeast India, but its its flowering and maturity could be seen in western part of India, that is present state of Maharashtra. One can say how we know this because from the twelve hundred and odd caves in India, out of which thousand are in Maharashtra. The earliest ones are the Buddhist, followed by the Hindus, that is Jogeshwari, Mandakeshwar, Ellore, and all those. hindu caves and then comes the jain and later on we have the nath panthis who made caves in a very small way but this number varies because new caves have been found in this 20 or 30 years of time by few scholars but they are we call them as minor caves not like ajanta elora or karla or bhaja or anything like that so the trend once gained momentum it spread from magda to let us see it spreads to magda uh, andhra karnataka and maharashtra to the western ghats and its zenith could be found in the early historic period that is coincides with the shatavana period so rock architecture and sculpture had been practiced in many countries in the past particularly in egypt in petra in the greeks by the greeks in lycia by the assyrians then by the sasanids and all that but these cannot be compared with the western in cave centuries because the indian caves rocket caves are of very high aesthetic character now the facade of the caves in the other part of the country outside india we can say in china dunhong and all that 
it's very difficult to go inside you're not you cannot even climb you're not supposed to go inside and what you find inside are these just tombs this is naske rustam this is the human figures what you see you, you are not you are not allowed to climb up and what you see inside is nothing but a tomb one of the four tombs is the darius the great so this to show you all the comparative study the earliest rocket architecture what you see in india not architecture you can see it in simple way that is in dhola vera it dates uh, maybe 3500 years before christ bc you can say this is the earliest rocket okay now what happens the concentration of rocket caves in west india you can see here most of them are on the trade routes and the trade routes won't be not exactly very close they are very close to the rocket caves now the first one in maharashtra was the bhaja to be excavated in second century bc now you say sir how do you know all this because we have inscriptional evidences also and on stylistic ground one can compare and very well fit into the chronology of all these rocket caves in india in any part of the country so in bhaja right from barabar there you don't find any caves directly you jump into maharashtra that is near pune 40 km from pune these were excavated in the second century bc the earliest formative phase of rocket in india from 120 bc to 200 ad you find ample of rocket caves but these are all hinayana caves in which buddha was not represented so there a terminology is given hinayana mahayana and vajrayana and all those terminology keeps on changing from time to time but to be very precise and in a very simple way you just say hinayana in hinayana is called as lesser vehicle where little bit of wooden architecture was still there because these artisans or workers they never had an idea for the patrons that they are working in stone slowly slowly it was given up these wooden rafters you can see all from simplicity to very complicated architecture will be finding right from bhaja let us go slightly further but this is just and uh, now this is very wide arch open arch no doorway and these are the viharas this is the chaitya hall just keep it in mind for those who don't know now when you go inside you find a stupa with a harmika very simple harmika a single drum single drum this is called drum this is the under this is the harmika you have the wooden appendages let us go this is again bhaja now coming to the map which shows the guptas and vakatakas when we talk about ajanta we have two phases we'll come to that slowly but guptas and vakatakas they were contemporary to each other and we know that vakatakas and guptas had matrimonial relations therefore some of the scholars earlier thought that ajanta is gupta vakataka art but it was professor spink and before him was vivi mirashi an eminent indologist who brought vakatakas to limelight just 50 60 or you can say from 1952 onwards it was mirashi and and professor spink and later on contemporary was professor jamkhedkar because there are two dynasties like vakataka two lines one is the vatsagulma branch and the nandivarman so the concentration in concentration in the vidarbha region was brought to limelight by professor jamkhedkar sir and ajanta vakataka was brought on the indian map by professor spink how and why we'll just see that now you come to ajanta when you talk about ajanta first let me explain you in brief ki what is this this cave it occupies what does it occupy a unique position among the monuments in india by the superb symphony of architectural forms sculptures and above all are the world famous mural paintings why mural paintings we'll discuss why they are not called as frescoes the caves are cut in this crescent shaped form and with which a beautiful ravine and an additional boon which it has is the river vagora there are several cisterns cisterns is a rocket tank because man requires water there are only three sites in india as far as i know which has got a river flowing by one is bag caves in madhya pradesh one is panale kaji in konkan and ajanta we still have to find out any rivers flowing by but ajanta has got an additional boon but most of the water is fished from the river whereas they have water systems about 10 or 12 in number there are 30 caves in all the first phase when john smith came here but before which i would like to tell you about the formation of this rock this is volcanic rock known as igneous volcanic and we know varieties of basalt but this is amygdaloidal vesicular basalt so and the age of this rock is 65 million years before present you can add one or two more millions the rocks are exactly in the pahoo formation 
there are two types of formations in geology one is called pahoho and one is called aha flows so this is a hawaiian terminology from the hawaiian terminology we have the geological department gsi has taken this term and this is nothing but similar to that of the hawaiian like uh, environment let us go to the next one now i always tell my students that you have to see the monument in different seasons now this is just in the summer season in very hot season in the summer and after the monsoons you see ajanta like this ajanta will be almost like this so one has to see monuments if he is an he or she is interested should see monuments in different seasons so in all there are from, you start from year number 1 2 3 4 5 6 but there are two phases the first one is like 150 or 100 bc to 150 or second century ad and they took the central scarp of the of the ravine of the scarp of the the cliff and the upper portion they could not make caves because they are highly jointed that's a geological term highly jointed if you try to make caves here like if you see this slide if you try to make it here then it will come out in the form of lumps and you will have nothing left therefore they took the hard rock which is the central scarp let us go to the next one so the most important discovery was in 19th century we say this rediscovered by john smith on 28th of april 1819 where is scribbled his name in cave number 10 this is cave number 10 let us let me see 8 9 and 10 this is 9 10 we have five chaitya grahas 9 10 19 and 26 this is 19 and 26 this is 19 and this is 26 so they all cave number 9 10 12 13 and 15 a there are five caves which belong to the early period rest 25 belong to the mahayana period during the vakataka time and the earlier five caves they belong to the contemporary to the shatavanas we'll see cave by cave as much as possible and the the they took the central scarp and then in third and fourth century no activities went on no activities you could see at ajanta directly started during the king, the great emperor of the vaka dynasty known as harishena he has been mentioned in cave number 16 the genealogy of that is given now this has been taken from the caves how the valley looks like just after the monsoons and from here this is the view point from where john smith came with his cavalry he saw a tiger or an elephant uh, sorry tiger or a deer which went inside cave number 10 and then he brought his cavalry down and it was said that there were some tribes local tribes who were staying here so this site was rediscovered in 1819 and it is said he belonged to the 20th cavalry so we'll see his inscription also now as i said it it falls on seven leaps like it falls on seven times therefore it is called as satkunda the the very nearby uh, village is the lenapur lena means cave is comprised of 150 small houses but why the name ajanta because there is an ajanta village also which is 11 kilometers from the site by road and as the crow flies it will be about 2 and a half or 3 kilometers let us go to the next one another view the bigger river vagora once upon time was flooded and the lowest cave here is cave number 8 and the topmost the highest level be cave number 29 just behind this hill small hill or let us go slightly fast now when we come these are the water system the picture is not from ajanta this is from junnar because i was not able to get a picture right now in a short time so this shows you cave number 6 7 and here below is cave number 8 this is the lowest level and due water because of the water logging all the pillars everything the walls collapsed let us go slightly ahead so this was the situation before the protection of asi when the nizams of hyderabad took over the site they had protected this site and mostly foreigners used to visit they used to make their own sketches and all that and then how it was dated by james ferguson and burgess where the cave temples of india a, a very uh, huge book uh, that is supposed to be bible for us when we study rock cut caves so he said 5 to 6 century why because of a painting will come to that which they saw earlier griffiths and all that so many scholars have studied ajanta taking to different taking different aspects so it was ghosh spink and khandalwala these three come very close to each other like our regarding dating of the caves right now we are not into the dating of it but then spink he brings this chronology for 20 years of time which was almost approved by many scholars and it is difficult to challenge his theories which is a hypothesis we will come to that at the last end of the lecture now cave number 9 and 10 now you saw bhaja cave 
This is wide open to the sky. You don't have a doorway. It will be circa. We always in archaeology or artistry say circa that is approximately 150 BC. And then just after 100 years, first century AD, cave number nine, which has a doorway. These both are Chaitya halls. Cave number nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, and fifteen A. A for apple. A why? Because this cave number fifteen A was found later on by SI. Already they had given numbers one to twenty nine, or one to thirty, like sorry. And then they added this one to twenty nine plus this fifteen plus fifteen A. So it became thirty caves in all. So this is the facade. The front portion of the cave is facade. Hinayana, as I said, we don't have Buddha images. But then how you can say, sir, if this is Hinayana cave, how do you find the Buddha image here? Because when the Mahayanists when they came during the Vakataka period in fifth century, to be more precise, four hundred sixty two A.D., they made their own twenty five caves, which most of them were incomplete, and that is a historical evidence why caves remain incomplete to a certain extent. Then during fifth century, what happens? they occupied they made their own caves plus they used the earlier five caves as well this is evident that this goes along with the plan of the cave they in 5th century they made their images okay coming to the next one as when john smith came in cave number 10 here he wrote his name is inscribed and when you write on the blackboard you write straight you just put your hand straight and then you start writing you don't put your hand up and then you write so definitely he was standing on the debris why because You see some of the paintings in cave number nine, ten, cave number one and two. The lower portion is gone because of the capillary action. The paintings they're gone. The lower portion is gone. Apart from that, still maybe eighty percent of the paintings are still surviving. Now we'll see the technique also slowly. Now this is called as, as the aisle for circumambulation. The pillars in the rock cut caves they are for decoration, decorative purpose, or they are only for circumambulation. If it is a chaitya hall, this is a chaitya hall. Where they do prayers, and this is vaulted. You can see vaulted. But then later on, they become flat, and then the wooden rafters is gone, and you have the stone rafters. And then in fifth century, they made their Buddha paintings. You have paintings of the Hinayana period. You have paintings of the Mahayana period as well. Coming to the facade of cave number one, which is also called as Hari Shena's cave, according to Professor Spring, because this was not dedicated. How? Why this was not dedicated? Because he said it is a hypothesis. He died in 477 A.D. There is all historical thing which we should not go into this right now. But why King's Cave? Because you see, there is no black soot inside. No lamp lamps were burned inside. Again, secondly, there are so many evidences to say everything about kingship is seen inside this cave, cave number one at the side, and the facade of this vihara is highly decorated. You have all the life stories of Lord Buddha. He saw an old man. He saw a dead body. That is all in the form of sculptures all around this architrave. About the architrave, we have the stories of Buddha and beautiful pillars, highly decorated pillars. Here you can see. Uh, here you can see the closer view of one of the pillars. Like you have Buddhas everywhere. You have the flying figures on the. These are called pillar capitals. This is the architrave. And once it had a pillar portico. Just similar to that of cave number nineteen, but it fell down because of a fracture. In geology, it is called as a fracture, and this might happen a few centuries back. We don't know when. Next one, the Buddha inside. Now we can see the chronology can be built in this twenty years or thirty years of time. It is Dr. Jamkhedekar and Dhulikar, these eminent scholars, right from hundred years or two hundred, which it took, which they used to say earlier. They have come down to thirty-five, forty years now in this twenty years of time after Professor Spring's study. Uh, in our own study of six volumes, that will come to the last. Now you see Buddha images from Buddha images in each shrines. If you see, you can very well trace which is early, which comes after that, and whether it started early and it was stopped, abandoned, and again it was restarted. Can be very well studied at the site. Thoroughly it can be studied, which is a simple truth. You have attendants on either side of Lord Buddha. You have flying figures. And most of the images were painted once upon a time. Now you have traces of paintings, and luckily Asa has still kept even small, even a small plaster or anything. They have just kept it on the wall or on the ceiling or any part of the cave. Now this is in Padmasana in Dharma Chakra Pravartana Mudra. That means in a teaching attitude, you can very well say which comes first, which comes second. There are many uh, features from which one can say. Ki which comes first, which which caves come second, which pillar will be first? Like now, this was the Persian embassy, so-called Persian embassy. Some of the Sasanian characters they have the Sasanian characters due to which Ferguson James Burgess 
and Pakistan said they misunderstood misinterpretation that the cave was was made in seventh century, and when it was made in century, seventh century, Professor Spink also thought seventh century, but when he said uh, Elephanta, which is a Hindu cave, and that can be dated to five fifty or the early sixth century, then how Ajanta can be seventh century? Then he started going back, and that way, and because of the box-headed characters of Brahmi script inscriptions, which is a uh, Part of a scientific dating, you can see many foreigners in Ajanta paintings. You can see in sculptures. You can see Muslim paintings. Therefore, that was a misunderstood. They misunderstood. It was misinterpreted just because of this painting in cave number one, on the right wall of the main hall. Coming to this, coming to this world famous Padma Pani. Only an artist can describe how it is good. We know it is good, wonderful. We can say. But a real eminent artist, particularly from the those who are studying paintings, they can know why it is good. Just because of the elaborate crown, then beautiful eyebrows, a very prominent nose. That then you see in Trivanga posture, you can say, and his drooping eyes, holding a lotus. That's why Padma Pani is a Bodhi Sattva, and the flora and fauna in the paintings can be very well studied at Ajanta. You see a palm tree, you see animal, you can see a monkey. You can see some geese. So, from a common man to the kingship and the queen, the palaces to a small hut, even the ants have been depicted in the paintings. And how do you make this painting? Let me tell you in brief. Like these are the murals. The walls and the ceiling of the caves are specially prepared because it is a rough wall, chiseled wall, which can hold the plaster very well. And they give a lime wash. And after that, what happens is that when the plaster is dried, I've given like what you can read while when I'm talking. So, like these vesicles, vesicles are the holes in that rock. They are filled with secondary minerals. We'll come to that, and it holds the plaster very well. And when it is dried, they give a lime wash or a red ochre layer, and they start painting. But it is not one artist. There are several artists in one cave working simultaneously. So it is a simultaneous work that also will come to know when we study cave number twenty-four. Now you can see blue color is also used. What are the different colors used? Is lamb black. And then you have lime. Then you have red ochre, and some minerals will come to that. What I wanted to tell you was very bold lines, very sharp lines is the main feature of Ajanta. Very sharp lines, these very sharp lines are, and the students of JJ School of Art they very well know these type of paintings. That's why they are called as murals, and they are not called as frescoes because in Dunhuang and Kizil in China they are. True frescoes because when the plaster is wet, they make the painting, and it can be very well cut and brought. That's why a few frescoes from China are kept in National Museum, New Delhi. But at Ajanta, for souvenirs, these Britishers they took some of the portions, and everything collapsed. Nothing could survive except for one piece, only one head from Cave Number Sixteen. Now is in Boston Museum. Now this is how this is will be the layer, and uh, you have this mud plaster. How the rough surface, and then uh, what type of con uh, contents it has? Paddy, paddy husk, grass, and all those things. And they give a lime wash. That is what I told you all. Then this is Vajra Pani on the right side, which has got an elaborate crown. When you see elaborate crown, or you see the ornaments and all that, definitely the artist very well knew what was there, what was going on in the capital. The elite class, the common man, all these things were known to the artist. So what type of shades? What were used? All the colors readily available were water, yellow ochre, or pigment yellow, Indian red, lapis lazuli, which was brought from Afghanistan. Anything rare becomes valuable. That's why we don't get more of lapis in India. That's why it was imported, and it goes in far away in most in many parts of the world in ancient times. Lamp black, you know, how they collect. So most of them were organic, organic paints that was used and which were soluble in water. Anyway. Now this is the great ascetic imparting to the king Mahajanaka. One of the paintings which I wanted to show you all. See the serenity on the face. This is the ascetic and Mahajanaka king. How he's he's paying obeisance to him, and then he's giving him the knowledge of the true path of renunciation. This Bodhisattva listening with devotion to the ascetic words, and then how he leaves the palace. And when he's preaching this uh, this ascetic, even the animals are listening to him. So the depiction. is so in a beautifully way depicted in the paintings let us go to the next one this is the mahajanaka jataka where the dancer and the musicians they are 
the dancer she's trying to distract lord buddha who is seated here uh, or i think is mahajanaka who is still yet to become buddha buddha hold to get distracting so this is one of the scene of mahajanaka you see a lot of drapery and you see lot of uh, ornaments you see and then you have these ceiling paintings what you see the flying gandharva the flying couple you have a name in the creeper and these in this is a lotus medallion which will find in the central portion of the hall on the ceiling plus you will find at the ante chamber and plus you will find at the shrine as well but then professor spring says which is true this is 2 feet by 2 feet how long it takes so if you say 2 months or 4 months then you will say you go home so it is sure a very common sense that 1 feet by 1 feet of painting may take few hours so likewise he has made calculations that how it takes 20 years of time this is one of the aspects which i am telling this is not the only thing there are many aspects to date this cave in 20 years of time that is the mayana face coming to the next you come to cave number 2 elaborately dave cave number 1 2 cave number 16 and 17 are highly elaborated paintings with show so many paintings most the entire cave is painted because it has lot of jataka stories cave number 1 that is life of buddha his birth to mahaparinirvana as i said you see the lotus medallion just be careful just watch this play this is broken i'll show you one more picture why this is broken so sometime you have to use common sense and mostly everything is observation when you go at the site you have loving couples on the on the doorway you can see this tree and river goddesses and this also helps you to identify the dating this also helps you to, at the same time how buddha images keep on changing in that 20 or 30 years of time whatever it may be now coming you have beautiful bracket figures we start coming up so there were 14 patrons in all it is not that it started from cave number 1 uh, number wise but different royal patronage was there that is the wakata the the feudatory kings the local patrons mostly varadeva who was an eminent minister of uh, harishena and then afterwards after harishena's death his son sarvasena was a useless guy that is what it is said in the text he did not do much and then you have upendra gupta a local king so we'll come to the history of that slowly slowly but you just be see that the entire images or most of the images at the site were painted coming to this, this is a closer view which shows you that you don't require plaster just like a stucco work on the images because it is very smooth the images are just uh, smoothened and made like polishing like but basalt doesn't give you a reflection as granite gives you that is what you see in barawar hills you have beautiful painting on the ceiling you have um, on both the sides you have chauri bearers also called as fly whisk bearers then you see the ceiling in the main hall so beautifully decorated with geese and all that the central portion has got a hook we see in the paintings ample of garlands you see so definitely garlands were used and removed maybe daily or alternate day so garlands were being hung here and the guy who used to remove the old one and put a new one so he requires a stick or something bamboo or some stick so every day he used to remove and he used to put this is an assumption that's why he broke this plaster this is what professor spring says which is quite true which can why the other portion is not broken except the center but with small observations which he has done at the site the methodology one has to study from him rather than going into controversy how 20 years and all that that is the research part coming to hariti and panchika apart from the main shrine what you see buddha shrine you have subsidiary shrines on either side in hindu temples also you see the main god will be in the central shrine and you have subsidiary shrines likewise in buddhist caves also the ajanta site is pure buddhist site it has got nothing to do with hindu and jainism total buddhist site on the right side you have harichand panchika i will not go into the story of this she eats as one one child is born and then i have shown here like seated in lalita sana posture pot bellied which shows a wealthy person like he is uh, that is a rich man so likewise and you have a ram fighting this ram fight children are playing and a teacher with small children so all these children are going to be consumed by this hariti there's a story which will take maybe 15 20 minutes to go i don't want to go into the story but in this shrine is very well decorated and the rock is very fine here you can see the rock and the artist go hand in hand a good rock and you should know the properties of rock what is a good rock and what is a bad rock this is a good rock without any vesicles this is compact basalt fine grain basalt you can say and then the artist is also very good coming to cave number 3 see caves are not all in one straight line this is up cave number 3 this is cave number 1 this is uh, this is sorry cave number 
K number three, K number four. Why? Because you have cells inside. Otherwise, if you bring this cave down, they'll bump into each other. So that positioning of the caves, they very well knew. Sometimes mistake was there, very rarely. So this is the plan made by Dr. Suresh, my father for Professor Spring, and then. Uh, he was a research associate working for Professor Spring University of Michigan. He passed away in 2012. And Professor Spring passed away in 2019, November 23rd. This is the facade of care number. Just began, you can say. So care number 3, 5, 24, 28, and 29, they were almost incomplete. And that got a historical background why they remained incomplete. Coming to this care number 4, convention dies hard. That is the pillars which you saw in Bhaja. Now what happens is that Again, this octagonal pillar start coming up on the facade, but the size becomes bigger. Now let us go inside the cave. Let us see the doorway, a very elaborate doorway. These uh, tree and river goddesses are on the alignment. They are straight on in on this pilaster, so-called pilaster, you can say. As soon as they go out, then they are late in period. Late means four years, five years later. You can see in the chronological order what he has given. When they are right up top, this is early. So few caves started early in groups, three, four at a time. So we won't go into that right now. Coming to the interior, when you go, you see Buddha in Padmasana. And now they are just at the last moment because you are you're making the images from top. You are coming from top to the floor level. When you start coming, they never had an idea to keep this, both the uh, attendants. They are called as chauri bearers. So they just squeezed in somehow, last moment. Otherwise, they are not so, so much closer in view. Okay. And then you have beautiful devotees in stone. Whereas in cave number 26, the artist could not reserve the place, the rock for the uh, for the devotee. So he just made a hole. So that hole suggests on the left side, you have stone devotees. On the right, you don't have because there are three holes. And on the left side, you have three stone devotees. So the three holes, common sense is that they must have put some wooden or made in stone and they have fixed it. In due course of time, it has gone. That is in cave number 26. And cave number 19 also, cave number 19. And then these are the Buddha images in the shrine. They are just haphazardly put. Why? Because they are, when the site was abandoned, the local people came and they made their own Buddha images. They, they donated, they gave some money and make, I want a Buddha image here, I want a Buddha image here. So likewise, so they are called intrusive Buddha images. They don't go along with the plan of the cave during that dating. When the site was given up, when the Ashmukas had to leave this Ajanta place, just because of the war and all that, that's a historical event. They moved to Aurangabad caves, where in very close to the city, they have 12 caves. They also belong to the, just after Ajanta, Aurangabad starts. Coming to the interior of the hall of cave number four, one fine morning, Professor Spring said, Ki, the whole ceiling collapsed, which is true. But then we argued, it is not necessarily the whole ceiling collapsed. A portion of the ceiling might have collapsed. They knew the dangerous portion. So they removed the dangerous, that is all flows, lava flows one after the other. This is a volcanic rock. And in volcanic rock, this lava flow, just one above the other, they start coming in few seconds, few minutes. And there's no time for fossilization. There's except one frog fossil is found in a volcanic rock, which is kept in St. Xavier Geology Department. Now coming to this, they understood the difficulty. This is the lava flow. This is called as a ropey lava, more of glassy material. So they had an idea. So they just raised the ceiling towards the shrine. You can make out. They raised the ceiling towards the shrine. So the artists, the craftsmen, they were well trained. They were uh, what you call not just began their work. They had a very good experience at Ajanta. When they came to Ajanta, they were brought not only from the capital, from all parts of the country in fifth century in the Mayana period. Now you have beautiful musicians which are depicted in the painting also. These four pillars are very close to the antechamber, or you can say close to the shrine, and they are pure Wakataka. You can say because. Ramtak, Ramtek temples also do have similar type of dwarf figures and that belongs to 3rd century. So even Amravati, though uh, stupa, the sculptures, they very well go in with the, with the paintings. The theme, the stories are almost similar. The figures also, only the medium is different. Amravati is in stone, Ajanta is in painting. There are PADs on this uh, painting and the sculptures together. Coming to this, coming to cave number 5, as I said, this is the facade, the front portion. The pillars are, four pillars are done. Three pillars, this pillar is yet to be done. You see the doorway is done. So Professor Spring says early and late. What does it mean that the cave started early, but it was given up for five, six years. Maybe the whole crew was taken to some other cave. And then the features tell you that again, it started late after seven or five years of time. This is the plan 
So most of these plans are made by after Burgess, who was the pioneer who made beautiful plans, the Cape Temples of India. But then five, six clam plans were not done, like year number three, five, twenty-four, twenty-eight, and twenty-nine. These five plans were made by Suresh Jadhav. Anyway, now coming to cave number six. This, this is a double-story cave. This is the only cave at the site which is double-story, ground plus one. Whereas at Ajan Elora, you have you have two tall and three tall. Call it two-storied, two and two and three tall. Actually, both are three stories. But here you see. We asked the student which was made first, the below one or the upper one. So we have so many questions at the site, and one can study rocket architecture at the site rather than going through the textbook. Most of the things are not given in the textbook. Only the length, breadth, height, and paintings, everything has been described very well. But there are so many small things like chisels which are broken in the walls. Where are the original hooks? And all those things can be very well studied at the site thoroughly if you spend a lot of time at the site. Anyway, now coming inside interior. Now. This is lower six image, and this is upper six image. Because lower six is a very simple Buddha image seated in Padmasana and giving boon giving, called as Abhay Mudra. Whereas this is Dharma Chakra Pravartana Mudra. Now the lower one does not have any attendants, whereas the upper one has got an attendant. So definitely there are many aspects one can. This is one of the aspects which I told you criteria you can say that to know that this the lower was done, the lower key was done earlier than the upper one. Anyway, coming to the next one, you have one more subsidiary shrine in cave upper one, and you have original hooks here. If you go to Ajanta, there are, you have to find. This is all in dark, totally dark, and then there are two small hooks, one year and one year. Certainly, it was meant to garland Lord Buddha. And as I said, most of the images were painted. Coming to cave number seven, when I just said when it was under the Nizam government, you see many sketches were done, or even prior to that. So when the officer, they said when clean up the site, it is it's a written record. Clean up the site, the officers are coming. So what these people did to clean the site means they whatever loose images were fallen down and the pillars they just threw it in the valley. There are still two three images in the valley now. Rest all is gone, and then it was restored by ASI, and they have just restored these pillars. This is prior to the protection of the site. This is afterwards. Cave number seven. Cave number eight, as I said, lower lower most. Portion at the site cave number nine, and then it was waterlogged. You have a very bad rock inside, very fragile rock which was washed away. There are some traces, and the generator was there which provided electricity to entire site. The British time during that uh, diesel motor was there. Now they have electricity and all that, so it's almost locked. So fortunately, Dr. Jadhav, he was the first person who got an article who says this was the first Mahana cave at the site, which was approved by Professor Spink as well. But what I mean to say, the facade is very bad. So some portions are given up, not the entire cave. Some scholars, when they say the cave is incomplete or unfinished, they say the rock is bad. They don't have an idea how to know whether the rock is bad or good. So this is highly jointed. When you say highly jointed, when you try to break this rock, it will come out in the form of lump. If you try to break this, so nothing will remain. So it is highly jointed. It's called close jointed. So therefore, the facade is bad. And tell you. The peripheral rock is all the time bad. When you go inside, the rock becomes better and better. Coming to cave number nine and ten again, this is the general view. We have lava flows. You can see most of the time they kept away this dangerous lava flow or this joint. You can say away from the ceiling, or sometimes they use it for floor. This is the interior of cave number nine. We have octagonal pillars. Again, a simple stupa, not as stupa, not as simple as what you call. um bhaja caves we have a good harmika and which has got a hole either square or round to fix up the umbrella which was in initial <coughs> sorry initial stage it was in wooden umbrella in hinana period mostly all wooden umbrella in late hinana period in mahad pura shirwal and other places you have stone umbrellas coming up so you can distinguish early hinana late hinana and then mahana phase okay now these were painted during the mahana period whenever you see a buddha image at ajanta or anywhere in rocket caves just close your eyes and say that it belongs to shirka 5th century because in earlier period buddha was worshiped symbolically that is an iconic form that is the help of symbols a stupa a people tree a tree a tree in railing then footsteps and many more things like wheel of life and many other things was Because Buddha himself said that don't make my images and all that. The earliest Buddha image, as far as I know, according to Professor Dhaulikar, he says that it was at Kaneri, just in in the veranda of, and on the pillar on the right side, 
you know, there's a very small image of Buddha, maybe five inches on the pillar, attached to the pillar, cave number three at Kaneri. Now, now this was the situation before the protection of this site. These pillars were all gone. And then the Nizams of Hyderabad and the ASI, what they did was they made reinforced cement concrete pillars. It's called RCC pillars. And in recent years, they are doing restoration. And this was, as I told you, in Hina period, the decoration was made on the architrave. This is the architrave. This is the architrave. Wooden beams were attached. And they don't require nails. They were just fixed one into one, just this way. This is the way they just fix it this way. They just fix it this way without the help of nails. And then they rest on this architrave, which is four inches wide. And then what has happened? Why they're gone? Because maybe when the site was abandoned, the local people might have used it as firewood. This is an assumption which is quite true. And then again, teak wood can, that is teak wood, which was used for railway rafters also once upon a time. Now they use concrete ones. So teak wood, uh, you will not, insects will not harm teak wood unless the teak wood gets uh, bad or disintegrated or gets spoiled only if it is waterlogged. And it also depends on the climatic conditions as well. This is a not that bad climate agenda. Anyway, now this is the John Smith, what he wrote here. Again, I don't know why it is repetition. Then you come to cave number 11. Cave number 10 is Chaitya. As I told you, cave number 9, 10, 12, 13, and 15, eight. these five were. This is cave number 12. This is 11, and this is 10. Why I'm showing you all? Because this is very attached to the Mahayana cave, is attached very close to the Chaitya hall. Now, look carefully. There's not much space here. Now, what happens? Conventionally, there has to be a cell for the monk here in the veranda, as you have a cell here. Now, I can't see, but you have a cell, sorry, you have a cell here, cell for the monks. But they could not make a cell here. They made a, you see, see these two steps, you go inside, they made a cell adjacent to the hall, which is not there in any of the side, you will not find such a type of change. They could not make it here, but they wanted a cell, so they made it here. So why they could not make it a cell here? Because if they make a cell, they just bump into the hall of cave number 10. So it is all your observation. This is not given in any of the textbooks. And then again, coming to the ceiling, this is the only ceiling painted in black and white. And then you see most of the painting is yet to be cleaned. And cleaning takes place millimeter to or centimeter to centimeter. Or in short, if you just want to clean this four, what do you call, squares, it may take six months or maybe one year also. So there are some more paintings which has to be still cleaned. And then inside you see the Buddha seated in Padmasana. But here the idea was they wanted to make a stupa. When they came up to this position, they wanted to make a... They, see, unskilled labor will keep the rock reserved. The skilled person will start... The skilled artist will come and start making the main thing. We'll see in cave number 24. So this was, this is the shape of a stupa. You can very well make out. This is what's going to be. And then this was meant for circumambulation to, for the stupa. You can see the rock is yet to be removed. And then they gave up this idea. And then here for the first time, in cave number 11, you see Buddha. Now, instead of give, making only a stupa, why not make a Buddha image? And there are eight different types of doorways, whether the door is single door or a double door, whether it comes out or it opens inside or whether it opens outside. Then you still find a teak wood, which is of fifth century. I told my friend who's a conservator, Mr. Danway, to just cement it so that nobody removes this block. This is very smooth from inside. And with the pivot, P-I-V-O-T, pivot, they can just rotate the door in and out. And this is very, if you put a hand inside, it's very, very smooth. Now for you all, it's difficult because now it's more strict to go inside the shrine unless and until you take a proper permission to go inside the shrine. This is the shrine doorway of cave number 11. And there are different types of doorways. This is one more type where they reserve uh, for the door fitting. And then afterwards, they came to know why should we reserve this rock. So they made a hole here. So there are eight different types of doorways as suggested by Professor Spink, which is a simple truth. Coming to this cave number 11, this is the only painting impression of a cloth which was found by my father Suresh because he could see one thread coming out. He had a very good eyesight. And then, then he found out this is the only, and then Professor Dhaulikar or somebody wrote an article on this. So this, so paintings were made on cloth also. And you know, it is an organic material. It is going to disintegrate, leaving behind the impression. And then this tridents, what you see, uh, the examples, when the site was abandoned, the sadhus, the rishis, they came and they stayed, they started cooking. So the evidence has not been lost. 
so luckily asi has not removed any of the evidences right when the site was protected right from the site when it was protected coming slightly coming to cave number 12 you have cells for the bunks this is a typical vihara these arches what you see in most of the hinana caves at uh, kondane you see at kondane you see at karla you see at bhaja mahad shirwal and many more caves you see this miniature chaitya arches they are called as miniature chaitya arches and in hinana caves you have rocked benches for the monks to sleep but in mahana cells you don't have benches yeah, they may be sleeping on the floor what was the reason we don't know now cave number 12 this is the facade outer and this what i was showing was the interior view now the rock here the fairy hill rock is very bad jointed and you see buddha in pralamba padasana posture that is uh, extended legs known as uh, badrasana also and then he is in a teaching attitude posture incomplete you see a joint which is open joint you can say these are all closed joints so the peripheral rock is bad they gave away so some portions are given up not the entire cave why caves were given up 3 cave number 3 5 24 28 and 29 all these five caves were given up because 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 of some historical event which took place okay this is the closer view where the buddha you can very well make out this is a buddha image and they just gave away they, they could not make this image just because the rock was bad but one thing one should understand no cave in india you can say was given up because the rock was bad the portion is given up some portions are given up the site entire cannot be given up like when you come from the elephant gate you come to cave number 16 this is one of the most crucial cave as professor spring says because the dating of this cave this helps to date ajanta very well that is the mahana phase a very complicated cave which shows the genealogy in the inscription will come to that and this elephants what you see if you close this then it's difficult to go from 16 to 26 this is the main and today when we are passing through this pathway made by asi otherwise the original pathway was was from the river itself there were many steps which used to lead the river it goes to the river most of them is collapsed the frontage has gone except for cave number 17 has got still has got original steps and then they could go to the river fetch water if they wanted to so but the stairs does not mean for each and every cave they had steps so some steps were shared among three four caves like that plus water systems there are about 12 in number where there are 30 caves there were the water systems were shared among the caves by the monks now this is the nagaraja here just behind this boy this is a nagaraja who is supposed to be the protector naga is supposed to be the protector seven hooded naga now this is an old photographer during my phd in 1999 now asa has plastered this this is a this shows a band is known as tachylitic basalt which is a very soft rock so what they might have done was made of stone or wood and they would have made this hoods the cobra hoods and they would have worshiped so he is guarding the whole valley from here he is supposed to be the guardian guardian you see in most of the rock cut caves you have nagaraja in human form nagas in human form known as in anthropogenic form and yun sang he did not visit the site but he says thousands of workers in his diary he mentions thousands of workers were working at one time and in no part of the world you can see such an activity which was going on in 5th century under the supremacy of king harishena the greatest emperor of the wakataka dynasty and then all of a sudden he dies because of that war when the ashmakas take over the site from the rishikas and likewise and then these are the royal patrons the money comes from the capital itself that's why so huge bigger caves and beautiful paintings you see that is why it is a world heritage unesco world heritage site you can say it is no doubt and then he just says the he can hear the roaring of the elephants yunsan does not did not come here but he says he could hear the roaring of the elephants and all that anyway that's a story all together but we tell our student which one you like the left one or the right one most of the students they say the right one is good but they don't understand because that is because the experience and maybe coming for the first time here this is all cemented one whereas this one is original one and these siliceous veins are very hard the artist does not bother if any geological flaw is in the way they still excavate they adjust the images wherever necessary but most of the time they don't give up like coming to the next one now this is the inscription as i told you which mentions the genealogy cave number 16 of the and it mentions the king harishena and his able minister varahadeva also which is a dedicatory inscription and beloved by the king and the subjects he who 
was of strain and firm mind endowed with the virtues of liberty forgiveness and generosity so all the good things about the king has been mentioned here and it gives you the genealogy it gives you about the varadeva's father also and uh, hasti bhoja and devasana and all that is very well said and then uh, came number 17 to 20 by upendra gupta who was a local king so uh, what i mean to say i should not go into the history because that becomes very boring for you all and that was uh, uh, from upendra gupta 17 and in cave number 17 inscription it says that on the west of this cave there is one uh, 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 grand gandakuti gandakuti means hall of fragrance that is cave number 19 and it says as long as the sun and the moon stays so there are many sayings and all this is uh, a scientific dating you can give to the site how it is 5th century because of the inscriptions and all that and secondly when we talk about professor spring let me come to that as well he his thesis is uh, foundation about ajanta for the past 60 years is based on vivi mirashi's work eminent work and then dashkumar charitra the story of 10 princes similar type of king harishena and all that is shown in that dashkumar charitra dashkumar charitra charitra that is the story of 10 princes now you see the buddha image start changing that instead of padmasana we what you saw in cave number 1 and 2 now it is in what you call is in pralama padasana the cave started early but the buddha image was made last so no cave is complete because their intention is to go and rush towards the shrine make the buddha image or make the stupa in the chaitya hall that was the main intention not the other things when you start walking from inside and you coming out you see most of the things are incomplete behind the pillars on the ceiling or on the floor cave number 6 also in the ceiling uh, the floor of the cave number upper 6 is incomplete incomplete later because their intention is to make and to worship the buddha anyway now pralamba padasara buddha image you see many things start coming up the chauri bearers you have the deer and seated on a lion throne and called it and in old books you said it is seated in european posture that is what burgess says but then in later books you say buddha seated in pralamba padasara posture in dharma chakra pravartana mudra anyway coming to cave number 17 as i said upendra gupta's he was the patron from cave number 17 to cave number 20 and then this is cave number 29 which is inaccessible you can't go here if you want to come study cave number 29 you have to come from the cliff from above hill then you get down so during my pd i took special permission took two three people attendants they helped me to go inside and this was studied by professor spring for the first time earlier anyway and this is cave number 17 i showed you i was talking about cave number 17 inscription upendra gupta's inscription and then the doorway of cave number 17 is elaborately painted as i told you cave number 1 2 16 and 17 highly elaborated and then you can see two artists working simultaneously how you come to know see the decoration of this painting and this one they are two different this one is different from this so two painters are working simultaneously again you can date this early because of this attendance on this pilaster as soon as they go away from this pilaster slightly later you can see that is one of the aspect how you date the caves coming up this is the buddha image in the rear view not only two attendants now so that is what it is not in one stroke that the whole cave is made it is made in that five or seven years of time we starts early it, then there is a gap in between this is all thoroughly studied by professor spring and that is how he has passed it on to me and that is what he has told me that you pass it on to the future generation as long as i am alive anyway but then let the ball be rolling he said then instead of these two chauri bearers you have two more attendants you have they are free standing and why these sculptures are so good that roundness is there they are coming out they are projecting out and this is a typical vakata card some scholars say vakata ka gupta art which is not been still yet because we know that there is a matrimonial relation now this is a interesting thing the wheel of life in the veranda of cave number 17 you see uh if you see the cell was made early or the painting was made early that is what we say we ask the students like if the cell is made early then the painter when you see the painting is going to cut this cell then then it's a mistake of the artist or what happens you know, i mean to say if the painting was done early then why should he cut the painting and make a cell here so this is a question if you take the center of this and make circumference make a round you see the radius and you make a circle it is definitely going to cut here somewhere so we ask this question many can't answer like because we know the site thoroughly 
I do not thoroughly you can say, but we still have to study agenda. One generation, one lifetime is not enough to study agenda. Anyway, now when you come down, it is going to cut here. So what they did, you can see, you can see a notch here. There's one more notch here, which is not visible in this picture. There's a notch here. So they put a stone slab in due course of time, the slab is gone. So they put a slab here and they lowered the height of the ceiling, uh, so of the cell, but easily one could go inside. And then they painted over it. You understand when they started, it is like that. So this is a hypothesis which is true, I mean to say. Then this is, these umbrellas, what you see, you find them even today in Myanmar. As I told you, the flora can very well be studied. You see the palm trees and beautiful flowers, decoration. This is in three dimension how they show. The palace scene, the king and queen making love, we can call it. And then attendant holding a vase in his hand and little bit of blue he's used, that is lapis lazuli. And then these attendants on either side holding some vessels in their hand. And then these two female figures peeping through the window. And again, you have this architectural feature, what you see in three dimension, which is borrowed from Amravati. Stupa as well, which is a simple truth. Now here, this is an example, how far it is true, I can't tell you. But you see this paint is nowhere on the ceiling of the veranda anywhere except here. So Professor Spring says, maybe he's right. I'm not, I don't know, but he, maybe you have to think over it. He says, when this was painted, after the ceiling painting was done, we paint the house from top and then we come down. We don't start the painting from down, except, except for one case in cave number six, because you see some splashes on the lower paintings you see in cave number upper six. Now what happens here is that when the paint was remained while painting this, these two colors, these two colors was remaining maybe. This is a hypothesis. And then he, what he did, the artist, he just put some splashes here, just decorated, which may be true. Then you can see the garland, garlands which are hanging. That is what you see in the painting. And in reality also, definitely they knew garlands. So they used to garland, keep garlands in the hall and on the Buddha images. Again, you see a black from uh, Africa, Negroid. And then uh, what you call is a nurse holding a pot. These things can be very well studied. And the banana tree you can see. And then a beautiful geese is here. These are the paintings. Apart from the Jataka stories, you have different types of paintings. You see a flying Apsara in cave number 17. See the elaborate headdress and the ornaments what she is wearing. As if she is flying, you can see. Because the scarf is as if it is in the air. Blown in the air. Okay. Then you see, this is that evil Jujoka. You can make out his evilness from his face. How the artist wants to show his evilness. See his hair just upraised. And his evil face is asking for random. That's the story. Coming to the next one. This is the Bhutia Monosperma is a tree in Hindi school in Marathi. Polus a tree. Polus is a tree which flowers in a particular season. And the artist has shown some black ants going all above the... If you see a closer view, you can very well make out the ants. Even you can trace the legs of the ant. So the minute details one can study the agenda paintings. The artist wants to show in a very simple way a three-dimensional wall. You can make out this is a wall and a monkey seated on a wall. And a lady who is uh, he's, she's gathering the flowers of the palace tree. Coming to this, the uh, all the time you see the devotees are shown in a very small way in height. Whereas Buddha is shown maybe 12 feet and this will be just the devotee will be 1 feet. That is to show the greatness of Lord Buddha. And in later course, instead of making an image, so they gave up making devotee images. They started, which is more easier to paint than to make a sculpture. This is a simple truth. Then these are the different type of paintings what you see at Ajanta. Let us go slightly fast. I think we are aware of these are the minerals, natural minerals. They said it imparts color, but these are not soluble. These are the incrustations. This is uh, Nagaraja and his consort, which are again protecting this cave number 19. This is a beautiful, world famous, you can say a masterpiece, Nagini. And these are empty vesicles. When the gases escape, leaving behind empty vesicles are filled with secondary minerals known as falgonites. Let me go slide. A very beautifully decorated facade of cave number 19. Where if you see Bhaja, the earliest cave, or see Baravar and Nisi, see how the progress it goes on. Beautiful yakshas on either side. And these are the closer view of the yakshas. As if, just like paintings, what you see in painting. Beautifully, uh, what you call yakshas, you see closer view of the... I won't go into the detail of each and every. But I've given a slight description of these beautiful... Images, what you see, the sculptures, these are the flying Gandharvas in cave number 16 on one of the pillar. And earlier you see, before the site was put, some lady cooking in cave number 19. 
and then when the site was protected, it has been cleaned later on. And here you have those devotees, just three holes and devotees, cave number 19. But one thing to know is that now Buddha comes along with the stupa. That is in the fifth century. Then you have cave number 24. This helps you to know how the site progresses, how one excavates. Different sizes of chisels and hammers are used for making. If they don't cut inch by inch. In, in, they, in lumps of rock is to be removed by an unskilled labor. Now, this is the facade of the cave. This is the veranda, which is totally done. When the veranda is being done, they go inside the cave. The cave inside is totally incomplete. This is the shrine which was going to be done. Shrine is where the Buddha image. And this is the partition wall. We, we can make out that two people were working simultaneously. These are the alleys. One person is standing, sitting here. One is here. So we're speaking and we have calculated that at this stage when the site the cave was incomplete, cave number 24, 94 people were working at this time. This is the plan made by Burgess. This is the shrine which you can see here. This is the plan of the cave. This is the shrine what you can see, uh, partition wall. Let us go inside and see. These are known as alleys. One person working here, one will be working here, few people working here. This is the shrine. All these are incomplete by an unskilled labor. A portion is for the pillar is reserved. And here is one pillar where all the pillars are incomplete inside. One artist has already started decorating the pillar. So what Professor Spink, this is a common sense like it was a simultaneous work going on where thousands of laborers, craftsmen, engineers, architects were working together. This was the condition of the, before the protection of the site of cave number 26. This is the facade of cave number 26. Most of the veranda is gone because the rocks, they tumble down, particularly after the monsoons. And now they they take more of precaution. Anyway, we'll not go into that. This is on cave number 26. You have the beautiful yakshas. And the offerings kept for him are some uh, fruits. And even there are some vessels kept for the yaksha. That is the offering. Then in here you have Buddha again. in Padma. That was a standing Buddha image in cave 19. You have a seated Buddha image in Pilama Padasana. And so this is the last from cave number 20 to cave number 26. Is the last phase of Ajanta. And then what he says, because of the war, the Ashmakas, the downfall, and they were thrown away from this place. And later on, the site, the last dynasty known for us, that is the Rashtrakuta inscription is there. On the Here you have the Rashtrakuta inscription. Just few lines, which is almost gone, but it is published. So that is gone. So maybe they stayed for a while. And after that 8th century onwards, this site was not known to anyone until it was rediscovered by John Smith in 1819. So this is the Mahapari Nirvana. Still, this is incomplete. The image is made. Uh, the dying Buddha, also called as reclining Buddha, also called as Mahapari Nirvana. The paintings here are incomplete. Anyway, and see, in temple or when you make a house, it is complete. But in rocket architecture, few portions are remaining. Now, when you open this door, when you open this door, you are going to you are going to close this. So this was left behind. And when you see this, this is a modern door. If you see the whole here, it's very very smooth. So when you start excavating the up, the interiors of the cave, this will remain incomplete. So this is the incision made by an unskilled labor. Maybe a standing dwarpala. And here again, you have uh, maybe here from the incision, you can make out where we will make out. The idea was to make a Padmasana Buddha image, but on to match with the left one, this side, they wanted to make a standing Buddha image. So the artist gave up, gives up the idea of making Padmasana. He wants to match with the left one. So he makes a standing Buddha image. In a what are the mudra coming to the last few slides, maybe five six. Now, these are the images which will give very well Vakataka uh, yakshas, very well compared to that of the Ramtek temples. This little bit of uh, conservation of cave number 10. These pillars, the red marking has to be replaced by ASI, which are in RCC. These are the pillars made near the booking office near Ajanta site. And this one block, second block, third, and fourth block, they joined together with the help of bell and dowel system and they erected this way. This is joined without any cementing material. The lower portion will have holes. The upper rock will have some steel rods which fixes into this. Similarly, it goes on. And then they fix it. And here they made a ramp. This was These are the real steps, earlier ones. They made a ramp here. Comes from the river. And crossing this, uh, what you call, the bridge. Just three, four slides last. This is how they bring it on top. This is Mr. Danwe, who is a very good conservator. And Mr. Deshmukh. They made this, removed the old ones. And then this is what you call the silicates have been insert by manager Singh, who was an eminent conservator, chemical conservator. And now who's the director of uh, Lucknow Chemical NR, NRCL something. 
he is there and now this is before conservation after conservation when they put the silicates just like saline water they use and then they put some silicates they are not acids this is how they tie up and they fill up with the silicates and this is before conservation after conservation anyway coming this is was taken this is a copyright actually which my father took in 1952 and this was in a very bad state of preservation i think this is not published but i have already written an article which is yet to be published and this is how a beautiful conservation done in stone by the earlier conservator when i tell you this when you go there you have to very minutely observe otherwise this was a secret but uh, how it has been very well conserved by the earlier conservationist okay anyway now this is shamu jataka in cave number 9 before conservation full of sooth after cleaning this you found this shamu jataka cave number 10 this is the shatavana paintings in cave number 10 graffiti marks or the people wrote their names and all that and then before conservation after conservation how the very delicately you have to remove that black soot why black soot because this was again used by the local people occupied by the people this is again the same thing this was shellac shellac is the, this is the proper shellac applied to the entire paintings you can see during the nizam but mr the yeah, last 2 minutes just 3 minutes more and this is how he has kept uh, the original portion and he has cleaned the entire medallion this is cave number 19 this is the facade as i told you the uppermost see the cotel is yet to be removed but when the cotel is yet to be removed they have already gone inside by 24 by 42 feet inside see they from the upper portion they make the arch in the case of the chaitya in case of uh, viharas they make big windows and doorway and they go inside start cutting from the top and come to the floor level if this cave would have been finished cave number 29 the historical evidence for what professor spring gives why it remained incomplete this is a mahana chaitya hall if this would have been finished it would have looked like cave number 19 facade this is the facade i showed you and one fellow has already started decorating a kirti mukha here you have the stone rafters you go inside 42 feet then you come down reserve for the stupa a rock for the stupa and for the pillars then intricate carving can be done in hard rock cave uh, basalt here the hardness will come around 5 and this is more scale of hardness the soft rock is talc we get talcum powder from this talc rock one the, he has made a scale which is uh, used all over the world and the hardest is diamond and basalt will go around 5 to 6 granite will be 7 to 8 like that between 5 and 6 is quite hard basalt but what i wanted to show was intricate carving can be done in a hard rock but if you see halvid and belur that is chloride schist that rock is soft the artist is good the craftsman is good and the rock is soft here in what happens the rock is hard but the artist is good so how rock and artist they go hand in hand this is a flying horse or they called a sea horse cave number 22 sorry 23 left pilaster this is cave number 1 with a conch and then this is cave number 24 on a uh, wooden platform this is uh, the male and female with attendant king and queen you can say beautiful intricate carving can be done in a hard rock also and then uh, they don't bother the silicious when passing by this is a very hard material this is slightly softer than this basalt is slightly softer than this intrusive body going right from the any anatomical feature this is right going through the breast this is a shukabhashini she is talking with the parrot in cave number 20 Eight, you can say twenty-seven, or le left wing of cave number twenty-six. So what I mean to say, the artist does not bother for a small geological flaw. There are two, three major geological flaws which we will not discuss now. This is my father and Professor Spring, his associate working for him since nineteen sixty-four to nineteen ninety-five. Then he was admitted; he was not well, keeping well. And Professor Spring, at the age of ninety-one, he passed away. This is how, at the age of eighty-five, he could climb these stairs. This is quite high. and then he used to teach me at the site and i used to get ideas from him this is the nagaraja near cave number 27 then how he used to tell me what you have to do give me assignments which I, this is not for publicity but this is the love and affection for him because he has seen me at my age now is 62 running 62 he knows me at the age of 10 from when i was in school second third standard and this is how he used to teach the students at the site this is shubha khandekar and many more were blessed uh, were able to attend this site seminars and even ratan parimo vidya dahejia uh, saryu doshi professor jamkhedkar and many more uh, deepak kanal rajesh singh they used to participate and there was a very good discussion
going on at the side. Then in the evening times, we used to have lectures. This is JJ School of Art team, teachers and students. Myself, and he used to assign me to deliver lecture on origin and development of rocket cave. This is we paid homage or uh, we could obituary for Professor Spring last year on 13th and 14th of December 2019. So they were very good people at the JJ School of Art teachers and students. This is what I'm teaching them at the site. And then uh, goodbye to him so bad we feel that how they used to carry him in Doli. At the age of 91, this person used to still work hard. This is all that would I would like to say. And I thank Khaki to give me an opportunity to say at very random, very brief. As I told you, once life, he also was unable to complete Ajanta. He wrote six volumes. And it was Schlinloff who did paintings, Mora paintings. And he could touch all the aspects of Ajanta. So I thank uh, Mr. Farooq. I, uh, I go back to you. Uh, but, yes. Yeah, tell me. Thank you so much, Dr. Jadav. This is really fascinating. What a journey, so many centuries. Uh, yeah. There are lots of questions, so I'm going to request the audience not to key in any more. Uh, I think this is going to take us a good amount of time to cover all the questions that are there. Uh, okay. The first one is uh, obvious comparison between Ajanta and other places which are in the vicinity. So the question okay. is, um, why are the murals? Uh, uh, why are the murals of Ajanta better preserved than those of Elora? No, in Elora there are not that so many paintings as that of Ajanta. You see, very there are no murals. There are very small patches. That is in the okay. Rang Mahal in Elora Kailash Cave Number Sixteen, so called uh -huh. Kailash. You are on the ceiling, and uh -huh. in patches you have, and then in Cave Number Thirty Four, that the Jain Cave that Elora. Then the technique is totally different. That has okay. what it doesn't compare. They are very late. They are very late paintings. Ajanta, you have two sets of painting. One is the Hinayana painting, cave number nine and ten. You have uh, only there are a few jatakas uh, in cave number nine and ten, but then more in one cave number one, two, sixteen and seventeen. It doesn't mean other caves are not painted. Cave number 19 has got some painting, but they are not Jataka stories. Cave number 26 has got okay. some painting. Cave number 20 has got some painting. Anyway, but these are, and then again, the later additions mm -hmm. at Elora, that is uh, when it was under this Holkers. You know, Holkers, under the yes. Holkers, that type of paintings are slightly very different from that of Ajanta. Next, okay. please. Yeah. Um, Bharat says there's a sim. Is there any similarity between the paintings of Ajanta? And, and those which he finds in certain Sri Lankan cave temples. Yes, yes, very okay. good, very good. The yeah, it is the Sri Lankan paintings very good. That is in Sigeria, those paintings are early sixth century. One can date very well to sixth century. The features of those uh, are very similar to Chola bronzes, very thin limbs and all that, and elongated face and elongated crown. So they are very similar to, some scholars say very similar to Chola bronzes, but the style is definitely borrowed from Ajanta. And even the Sri Lankan scholars, they admit, yes, it comes from, the influence comes from Ajanta, no doubt at all. So do you believe there must have been any religious uh, exchange of views or yes. uh, more term, in terms of trade or what? No, more of trade also, religion also. See, what happens is that, see, influence comes from one place to the other. See, we see Indian, our influence goes to Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Cambodia and all that. But most of the time, some scholars, I'm talking about the scholars. Scholars, they don't want any influence coming from the outside world. When you talk about, for example, the Ashokan pillars, they are definitely uh, borrowed from the idea, borrowed from the Persepolis pillars. Yes. But when I, when, because what everybody wants to get the credit, they get the merit like. <laughs> okay. So mm. likewise, but definitely Ashoka, there was some trade going on definitely from Persia, that is present Iran and India. So the idea, though they are not similar, the idea is borrowed from Persia. So likewise, it goes from India to Sri Lanka. But now proper Buddhist religion as such is not in India. Mm. It is in other parts of the country. For example, you have in Java, Bali, you have little yes. places, you have in Japan and Korea, South Korea, and you have in Myanmar. Anyway. Please. There is a fort near the caves which is called Ajanta Sarai. Can you shed some yes. light on that structure? Uh, Ajanta Sarai, that belongs to the Mughal period. It's a fortified village and where that uh, has been buried, what you call that, the movie Ajanta, who is that? Paro, Paro. Paro is who was with uh, Major Gill. Major Gill, she used to help and that is the lousy movie Ajanta which has you, many people might have seen. So that Sarai... Uh, belongs to 16th century or late 17th century. It's a fortified village. 
mm-hmm. and that doesn't that has got nothing to do with agenda okay so that sort of answers uh, bharat question you uh, how authentic is that movie which was made on major gill's life no no that is too much of exaggeration see even that and mohan judaro when goarikar came to deccan college we told professor shinde our vice chancellor told him he met him at rakhi gadi also and harappan side that but see what happens to what public will like Hmm. and to make more of exaggeration to make it more commercial both the movies are lousy ajanta and mohan jodara both are lousy movies <laughs> as far as i know mohan jodara i agree uh, yeah. but did major gill really make a contribution towards the area if yes what was the question what was the question sorry i could not get it can you shed some light on major robert gill's contribution no robert gill i don't know much about him see one of my friend is writing a book so he brings all the stories right from john smith and before john smith and major gill like he he used to make the paintings there itself mm-hmm. uh, and then the local people used to help him particularly this lady paro and others but see uh, it was a tragedy ajanta is uh, is not uh, what you call it's a uh, not lucky for all of them even today also you can see if you see the photographs ajanta pictures the colors will vary from each photographer to photographer right from binoy bahel to prasad pawar and all these everybody claim everyone wants to say in any profession that i am greater than him and all that i am much better so likewise so ajanta is not that lucky to most of them and even those paintings were burned and in that royal palace you know so and whatever fragments were removed they just crushed they could not stay except for that boston piece uh, which is in that boston museum a very small piece is in the museum otherwise i don't know much about gill okay so I talking like yeah sorry no so talking about photographing the paintings yeah. uh, the question from jatin is that is there any illumination inside the caves or is a flashlight permitted no 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 flashlight is not permitted see 30 years back the when the security and this unesco it was uh, declared as a world heritage site see we scholars are also not even professor speaking in the last few years was not allowed to go in the shrine earlier he had he, even the minister used to go during indira gandhi's time and all that he used to get permission and all that but there is lot of politics in asa and all that the officers would like would like him to, to go inside the shrine but then there was a complaint and all that but we students when we were students we used to go and walk around each and every cell even if you want to go you take you have to take a special permission but the whole group was not not allowed nowadays you either two or three people can go regarding flashlight you can't do because when you flash the painting when you bounce it thousands and thousands many people are coming and bouncing so the paintings they start fading away mm. okay that's so why it, they have very cool lights okay anyway yeah. but there are lights inside yeah there are lights inside and are those lights harming any of the paintings no no they are kept far away from the painting and okay. they have barriers now the barriers were just 2 feet away from the painting now they brought it 8 to 10 feet away from us from the paintings okay. so we have to see from slightly far away okay so staying with light and uh, uh, related subjects jatin's question are there any holes or niches in the walls where mashals would have been fastened for illumination no 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 see during that time na during those time lamp blacks lamps were being used mm. and uh, how you notice most of the walls the paintings have completely full of soot that's mm. that lamp cover of lamp Correct. black Correct. and then the uh, then this lamp black was removed by the nizams of hyderabad uh-huh. and a team from paris also uh-huh. had come in the earlier days when the site was protected by nizams and by the asi by the conservators from paris that is supposed to be the best place in the world for conservation. conservation yeah and then what i wanted to tell you was you will ask me how lamp because there's one stone lamp in one of the cave was stone lamp attached to the wall anyway uh-huh. one so, more i I'll, I'll, enc- i'll encourage two three questions i'll be happy uh, yeah there are quite a few more if you don't mind yeah. uh, uh some certain terminology which you used dr jadhav uh, uh, bindi wanted to clarify what is harmika ha huh. harmika is a portion above the under that is the stupa if you go back see you have a drum and the stupa has got different names like uh, the features the lowest portion is the drum which is cylindrical above is the under under is that uh, semi circular shape and above that is the harmika harmika is the decorative portion in bhaja you saw that was a very simple one and above that you will have a hole either in hinayana period you have wooden umbrellas 
and late hinayana period is mahad kuda shirwal and others late hinayana junnar for example junnar also they had stone umbrellas sometimes stone sometimes wood it goes on like if you build up the chronology you understand right from baja to elora caves anyway abhay wanted to know what is the difference between kinnar gandharva and makara 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 is a stylized umbrella and kinnar is nothing but a dwarf figure who uh, will be shown in the sky most of the time kinnar and gandharva kinnaras are you know they are half bird half animal half bird half human like okay. half bird and half human being like that they are called kinnaras in paintings you generally find and makara is nothing but a magar means a crocodile okay uh, i think this question is uh, i think the question has answered itself uh, about the doors and the windows built using modern materials they seem to have impacted the aesthetic beauty of the caves Vijay Kulkarni's observation: What is um, the doors and the windows which have been built into the caves? They are detracting from the aesthetic beauty of the caves. No, no, the door and windows. What they have put really very good. He has asked me those modern doors and windows. Why they have put? I'll tell you because because the rodents, the squirrels, the pigeons, and particularly the bats, they go inside. I mm. see when the site was not protected. What had happened? It was full of debris. How how the debris came? Flowing from the mountain hills. See, the site came to we knew it in 1819, and the site was abandoned. You can say definitely. You can say after eight century, it was not known to anyone except the Adivasi local people. It was a jungle. Even today, you see there are some tigers now also. So people were afraid to go there. The local and then it is away from the mundane world. It was not invaded by the Mughals and all that. That's why it remained. in a very good state of preservation okay and then the creepers the trees everything full of jungle like okay and then when this guy this john smith saw it was all covered when he saw elif uh, sorry a, a tiger or a deer going in cave in 10 he brought his cavalry down and then he wrote his name and then it came known to now what he said is right they spoiled definitely but if you they have put with jali that mesh because when the when the site closed at 5:30 they have to close everything because because no animals or birds they should go and spoil inside like okay there was monkey dung inside monkey dung and all that before the site was protected and it was not half it was two or three four feet in most of the cave not all that's why i know i understand but that tarpaulin what they put a cave number 16 17 and where there are paintings in the porch why because of this sun reflection of this sunlight is going to spoil the painting in the sense is going to lighten the paintings It go. It fade. I mean, to say fade is the proper word. It's going to fade the painting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Mahesh's question is: uh, Is there any study for what kind of the instruments and cutters were used for stone cutting and carvings? Very good. Very good. Very good. See different type of chisels and hammers, different sizes of chisels and hammers to make intricate carving. Small type of chisel is used. Small hammer is used for intricate carving, which I showed you on the pilasters. Those beautiful decorations, medallions. The last few slides which I showed you, cave number one, cave number twenty-four, and all those intricate carvings. I said those are rock is hard, and for that you require small chisel and small hammer. To remove bigger rock, you have a bigger chisel, maybe two feet or one and a half feet, and you tie a iron hook, and one fellow will hold that chisel, uh, and then two people will bang the chisel, one from the left, one from the right. This is what okay. we have seen. That is called ethno archaeology. What is happening today and what was happening in past? Those, when you compare, that is called ethno archaeology. And in South India, they make holes in the rock and put stone pegs, uh, sorry, wooden pegs, and in overnight, maybe one or two days, that rock becomes fragile. Okay. So big block of rocks can be removed with the help of crowbars and big chisels. And the unskilled labor, how much rock is going to remove? that much is paid that is known from because coinage was known in 5th century you find lot of coins uh, kalachuri coins at elephanta that is what professor spring says that you don't find a modern coin on the island of elephanta but you find ancient coins even today after the monsoon you go but they are all eroded so they are kalachuri coins so coinage was there how much rock you remove an example i am giving how much rock you remove that much you are paid nobody is going to do free of charge mm -hmm. but it was in those they patronized but even for the religion the dedication was there why isn't i so great dedication was there money was flowing from the capital itself the merchants were giving donations and most of the caves had each had a patron as i told you 14 patrons working together mm -hmm. in mayana phase that is 5th century 
that is why it is world famous now so yes. staying with chiseling etc ragu's question is what was done with the debris which was left over yeah. after chiseling many 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 students they ask that debris they are not going to carry home what they will do they will throw it in the valley yes so in that valley you even today you find so many uh, broken pieces most most of them is washed away today the water level you don't have much rainfall in that area but in see environmental studies has been very well done by many geo archaeologist geo archaeologist uh-huh. so when i was in 10th standard 1975 i remember you could not cross the river it was 8 to 10 feet high that much water and uh-huh. in ancient time as i told you cave number 8 was full of water how you know this because everything is washed away uh-huh. cave number 8 which is the lowest more lowest cave at the site is cave number 8 okay so uh, during see 1500 years of time climatic condition has changed okay mm. in that particular area okay yes uh just one minute my compute okay what is the best season to go to ajanta ha huh. yeah the best season is august september okay just after august end of august september the best is you uh, see everything green uh sairaj's question is in the meditation hall where there would have been obviously a lot of students why were couples making love which are being depicted pardon pardon why there are so many students <clears throat> in the medica- in the meditation halls where there would have been students yeah. why were loving couples depicted ha ah, loving think- couples are ah, in, in see loving couples uh, at least there are no erotic images there loving mm-hmm. couples are also called as amorous couple they are mm. known as loving couples and they are also known as mithuna couples at carla if you go and see those huge uh, life size uh, on the facade of the main chaitya hall at carla i think many might have seen you might have might seen carla you might have seen mm. the loving couples they are called as amorous couples so that was just uh, just for decoration purpose nothing to okay. do with erotism or something okay uh, kaiwan's question is is the stupa shape also derived from the bengal hut no 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 that is very late that comes stupa, later yeah the study of evolution of stupa is totally different you have structural stupas amravati nagarjun konda bharut sanchi they are structural and they are all early to ajanta mm-hmm. they are all early to ajanta okay all right wow <laughs> just looking if there are any further questions which we have could you suggest some books on ajanta uh, ajanta see see the the best book for any student for ajanta is that guide book by devla mitra who was a director general of asi started her career as a technical assistant she was an eminent scholar at random if you go to the site in one day early morning and till 5:30 if you work if you go cave by cave the best guide book is by devla mitra ajanta only the price is just 25 or 30 rupees and you go at any of the archaeological sites it's a ready reckoner you go side by side Okay, okay by cave and professor spring guide book is also good but he talks more of the hypothesis and the history of this site that 20 years he is more into chronology of this site 20 years of time okay. most of them are the common man is not interested in the dating of this site he is more interested to see what is in the site <coughs> correct right. i think the last question concerns yes. uh, uh, professor spring uh, could you i know you'll you might probably since you admire the gentleman so much you might take a lot of time but if you could just tell us in short about what exactly was professor spring's contribution i know he's been involved for so many decades ah, professor spring he was spring when he first of all first when he came to india he wanted to study the khajadi urishan temples it's a long story but he was not allowed to go enter jagannath puri for he says i am happy that i was not allowed to go in jagannath puri so he switched on to ajanta then he it was a coincident and before that he was assigned uh, when he was just newly married he was assigned to trace the inscription of elephanta there was an inscription which was taken away by the portuguese people and portuguese people just removed and took it in a ship but then he was assigned to go to portugal and he said i enjoyed portugal for two months i was unable to find that but slowly he switched on to ajanta and then when he started studying ajanta because of that painting which i showed the sasanian and all that then see this oh, they have lot of funds like early michigan institute used to give lot of funds uh, to study ajanta then ajanta to elora that is what he wrote first in 1965 mark publication he started but he did not change his theory first he said 400 460 to 482 
that comes to how much 22 is a 2 years 462 for sorry 462 to 482 20. but he has just yeah in that 60 years of his study he just cut short by two two years yeah yeah uh, and i think the last question which could have come earlier is is there any impact of any hindu dynasty on the caves at ajanta at ajanta yes little bit is there like they say in cave number 17 on the on the uh, cave number 17 in the veranda on the left side of the doorway is a image a flying figure flying in the blue sky that is lapis lazuli the clouds are shown blue and they compare it with vishnu okay. they say this is vishnu okay but then luckily the like what you see jogeshwar in mumbai or mandapeshwar you see in mumbai or the hindu caves at elora they are very much different from that of ajanta mayana phase and it is a pure vakataka art and as i said some scholars used to say vakataka gupta art you can say vakataka but they used to get angry they used to say jamkhed sir and dhavlikar and even provoke speaking says no this is an independent vakataka art thank you very much thank you thank you thank you everybody and good night and do attend as many of our future talks as you can thank you